Hey everybody, Jared Tate here, the founder of the Digibuy Blockchain. Today is Saturday, March 16th, and I'm coming to you with a Digibyte development update. Uh, but before I get into that, first of all, I want to thank everybody who has donated and contributed to help fund me to work full-time on Digibyte. This last week and a half has been absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, I can't believe it. Ten years later, I am still passionate about Digibyte and making Digibyte the best blockchain that it can possibly be. There's a lot of work to be done, but we're in the process of doing it, and I cannot thank everybody in the community enough for rallying around this effort and all of those who are helping out. Uh, you are amazing. Digibyte is all about the community, and once again, I can't thank you enough. So, if you're new to Digibyte, you know, I decided that all the videos that I put out over the years, I should start doing a quick intro to Digibyte on every video. So, what is Digibyte? Digibyte simply is a 10-year-old, it's over 10 years old now, decentralized blockchain. And what do I mean by that? Well, there is no central company. There is no employees, there is no group, there is no massive centralized pre-mine. Myself as the sole founder, every Digibyte I have, I either worked for, I either bought, or I mined myself. And to be honest, I don't have that much these days. But I'm working on ways to get more. So I truly believe in it long term, and we've been saying, hey, we are here for the long term uh, basically since 2014. So Digibyte is 40 times faster than Bitcoin. Uh, it has five unique independent mining algorithms to help the blockchain be more secure. You can learn more about that at digibyte.org. Um, but with that, you know, what really makes Digibyte unique is the community, the global community that's grassroots, that's passionate, and uh, is engaged every day. So if you want to learn more, like I said, head to digibyte.org or uh, just, you know, search uh, YouTube or head over to the Digibyte Discord. Uh, so with that, Let's get into the development update and talk about some of the things that have uh, been going on here. Uh, so let me minimize this. Maybe I'll put myself over in this corner um, and I'll keep the terminal window open here. Uh, so currently we are in the process of working on Digibyte Core version 8.22 RC4. So as a lot of you know, I came out with a proposal for myself to work full time uh, and over the last week and a half, we've managed to get a lot done. Uh, in fact, we've managed to make sure all uh, 470 unit tests, which unit tests of the C++ tests, um, are working. We've got make check working, which is what uh, this process here. So after you compile the wallet, you can run a quick make check. And what that does is that runs through 470 unit C++ tests. Uh, then it goes and runs through GUI tests, and then it runs through um, a series of uh, wallet tests. Uh, and then there's functional tests, which are, there's uh, 214 Python functional tests. Um, we've managed to fix, we had about 70, uh, don't quote me on this, like 76 failing. Uh, we've managed to fix about 60 of those in the last week and a half. Um, special thanks to uh, Jan or Jan. I don't know if I'm pronouncing your, your name right there, uh, but he's been a huge help um, along with uh, GTO and, and Y Kegel um, and uh, other people who've helped review. So thank you to everybody who's helped do that. Now, why are we doing this? Uh, well, we've made a bunch of changes with RC2 and RC3 that we didn't really get around to fixing the tests. Um, we fixed a bug where if you have a Digibyte Core desktop wallet, like uh, version 7 or, or before, and you've logged in and you've tried to send and you get an error uh, that the funds aren't available, well, we fixed that. We've also fixed a, a Coinbase maturity bug and some other things. Well, in the process of that, along with increasing the minimum fee, uh, which, you know, okay, Digibyte has cheap fees, but they're actually a little too cheap at the moment. Um, and that's something I can go into another video. But in this process of increasing the minimum protocol fee, fixing uh, a few bugs, it broke a lot of the tests. And so the important part about making sure these tests work is that we can just go in here, run a make check after we can compile after future changes and see if it broke anything. And this will help us, you know, prevent bugs in the future. So that's why it's important to do this. Um, the next update I want to get to is the Digibyte iOS wallet. I know that there's a lot of people out there that have funds that are stuck in the iOS wallet because it can't synchronize an update. 
Uh, some of the community members have reported that if you add manual seeds, so seeds or peers on the network, that they're actually able to connect and get it updated. Now, I've looked at it. I don't think it's that difficult to get an iOS wallet update out. Uh, it just involves changing some uh, um, seed settings, updating the, the seed nodes, and then updating some checkpoints. But there's also a few other things that need to be updated, and we really can't do that until version 8.22 final release is out. Um, and just to touch on the final release, you know, I, um, you know, I want to also thank everybody who's donated. Um, it's almost got me to what I need full time, but not there yet. But that's okay. I'm still going to work full time. Got some part time work on top of that. I'm doing. But it's really important we get 8.22 out because it's holding up a lot of other development, a lot of other apps and use cases that people want to build on top of Digibyte, and then also other wallets. You know, the 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 main thing is the core protocol. Uh, that's the most important thing because everything else is built on top of that. And 8.22 has just an insane amount of changes. We've been in the process of working on this for going on, well, I guess three years now. So uh, we really want to get it over the finish line and get it out as soon as we can so we can start working on a lot of this other stuff. So that's our main focus and priority right now. Uh, but yeah, with the iOS wallet, there's ways you can get your funds out right now. Like I said, you can try adding the manual seeds. Uh, you could use the DigiSweep app, um, or uh, I think it's the website. And uh, then there's some other more advanced ways you can retrieve the private keys. And then even some wallets, um, you can, I think, import the seed phrases directly. So um, if you have issues with that, go to the Digibyte Discord. There's a lot of great people that can help with that. Uh, and also, if you have the issue in the core wallet where you're not able to send. But that's all been fixed, um, and we're in the process of fixing more. So we've got about, I think, 18 or 19 remaining functional tests fixed. Uh, which are the Python tests, which is that's the additional 214 tests. Once those are done, I think we're very close to doing an RC4 and a final release. Um, there's some issues we need to resolve with Taproot deployment. We need to decide that. We need to decide a few other things with the community, but I'll address that in a video probably next week or the week after. Anyway, I don't want to confuse people with too much here. Uh, but to follow along, you know, you can go to the GitHub, which everything we're doing is publicly. If we look over the last month here, we're at 23, this says 22, 23 pull requests, um, which a pull request is where you make a change in addition and then it's reviewed by four other people. Uh, we've done a lot of work. Most of that's been in the last week and a half here. So uh, you can see all these closed pull requests. You can look at the commit history. This is all in the last week and a half here. Uh, oh, the other big thing that we did that I didn't address is we uh, were able to get Digibyte compiling on the latest Apple silicone hardware, which that's, you know, the M1 chips. We weren't able to do that until this week. Uh, that's very important for future deployments uh, for everybody who has a new Mac, you know, in the last four years. Um, that was pretty, pretty critical. I know a lot of people in the community were, were asking that. Uh, so big thanks to GTO for helping uh, get that working and uh, uh, tested there. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, with that, I want to keep this video as short as I can, so I promised a uh, current uh, status update on the protocol itself. Uh, so this is uh, the app that I've been working on for a year that I'm running here locally. Um, yeah, so a few stats. Uh, the Digibyte blockchain is 18.9 million blocks long. So it's uh, one of the longest, if not the longest uh, and oldest UTXO blockchains in the world today. Um, we're about to hit 19 million, so that's a it's a huge chain. With that, uh, there's been 46 point roughly four million transactions that have ever occurred on the Digibyte blockchain. Total size on disk is about 30 gigabytes, and uh, current block reward is 355 Digibytes. Um, if we go look at downloads, uh, the the main production version that's out there right now is 17 point or uh, 7.1 7.3. We've had about uh, almost 200 people test the latest RC3 desktop wallet. RC2 is 505. You know, that's a lot of testers. So thank you to everybody who's helped test that. And then we've got about 53,000 downloads uh, with the last major version that we had out, uh, which was, what, two years ago, three years ago. Um, recent 50 blocks. So as you can see, each algo should get about 20 blocks of the five mining algorithms. This is only going back 51 blocks. So you need about 500 to 1,000 to really get a feel, but it's working as it should. 
Uh, here's the real-time difficulty adjustment chart. That's one of the things that makes Digibyte unique is every block with every algo has a real-time adjustment to help prevent attacks. That's working as it should. Um, so with that, like I said, I want to keep this uh, short and concise. I want to try and do these uh, every week as long as I'm taking funding from the community to work full-time on development. Uh, but once again, I want to put a huge thank you to everybody out there uh, that's contributed to, to help do this and, and then also those putting in the work. You know, I think it would be a good idea if all the developers and all the community members that are helping work on stuff put addresses in, uh, you know, their Twitter bio or on their GitHub account so people can help them um, and fund them. You know, Digibyte has no central pool of funds. There is no mass pre-mine to take money from. And, you know, we rely on the community to get stuff done. So, obviously, people, you know, we, we still have to eat and put a roof over our heads. But um, I think a lot of us are passionate about it, and that's what brings us together. So, uh, with that, to conclude, you know, I had some people ask me saying they didn't want to contribute Digibyte directly, which that's my Digibyte address that ends in JT. Uh, but I've also got my PayPal and my Zelle set up. It's jared at jaredtate.com. And I also finally set up a Venmo, which I've never used. Uh, it's at Jared C. Tate, which is just like my Twitter handle. So with that, um, you know, thank you once again. And uh, stay tuned till next week for the next update. update. So thank you, everybody. Cheers.